For outsiders, gun violence in large American cities might seem normal, but if it happens to a friend or someone in your family, it feels very different. It's a problem that needs many interventions, not just by police and prosecutors. That's the premise of a film based in Boston called This Ain't Normal, directed by Rudy Ippolit and appearing on Showtime. It was recently nominated for an Emmy Award for Outstanding Social Issue Documentary. I'm good with these right here. I don't give a about nobody. Gotta check the bushes, you know what I'm saying? Gotta make sure ain't no new cars on the block, all that man, you know what I'm saying? We definitely on point. Gotta be cautious, man, where I come from, man. If not, I'll be on Channel 7 News, man. We, we lost our first friend at 15. We died at 15. 2004, lost another one. 2005, lost another one. 2006, lost two more. What I do isn't a job. I have to make sure this kid doesn't get killed. I didn't have nobody that could tell me how, you know, selling drugs is bad, stealing is bad, being in the game is bad. I feel like his life is like a repeat of my life. It's not normal for a young man to be shot. Like, that's not normal. These young men really need to see, you know, that positive image of who they really could be. We have to teach the young brothers and sisters in our community what it means to live. Joining us are two contributors to the project, co-producer Coach Dennis Wilson and a former member of Street Safe Boston staff in the film and currently with the Boston Public Health Commission and the Mass Coalition to Prevent Gun Violence. Donald Osgood Sr. I'd like to thank you both very much for being with us. Thank you for having us. Thank you for having us, Chris. I, I want to start with, with Dennis Wilson. You know, there are lots of commercial directors who, who make films about gun violence, and we make a you know hear about them making a lot of money on that. What was the mission of this film? Well, the mission of, of Rudy Hip and I, the, the uh, editor and producer extraordinaire, who we've uh, embarked this is our second. Um, successful pro documentary and mainly Chris it's about us kind of opening eyes and get and to promote discussion and pr promote and provoke thought as to all these young men and so many very talented young men that could be very valuable contributors to society that were losing too many young men brown and black young men at an alarming rate not only in Boston but throughout the country and we hope that this documentary we shed light on that unfortunate systemic problem that's universal and that again, that we can do whatever we can to provide the necessary support services for these young men, whether it be mental health services, whether it be job training, skill training, or just jobs in general, just also positive male mentorship to these young men to let them know that is, you know, a, a, a better uh, a opportunity, a better track to success in that you know, with given the opportunities that they can be successful contributors to society. And that's what we hope this film does. Donald, for, for a lot of outsiders, these young men are just members of gangs, but you see them up close. You see a lot more context. What exactly do you see? I see, I see a lot of young people who, you know, they have family, some of them have children, you know, and they, they care. It's just the life circumstances actually has you know, gave them a, a, a disadvantage, you know, at their start of life and they're trying to figure it out, you know, and if they had enough time to really live and, you know, get all the support that they needed, they definitely would turn out to be some real strong contributors to positivity in society. Dennis, I want to ask you about the, the name of this film, too, because I mean, a lot of people, I can imagine if, if you live someplace where a lot of people are victimized by gun violence, you might even think it's too normal to change. But what about that expression, this ain't normal? Um, what does that refer to? And that refers to, Chris, that it's not normal for a young man, 13, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, to, to die at a young, young age. It's not normal for a, a, a loving, doting mother or father or to lose their son or daughter at a young age. It's not normal, 
you know, for these young men, like Donald said, that could be very valuable contributors to society, that they don't get an opportunity to, to, to live a life, to, to, to lose a life at the young age of 15, 16, I'm almost 100, Chris, and, you know, to know what I've experienced and the joy that I have of living through all the different things that I've lived through, okay, and these young men are not going to get that opportunity, and, and it's just a tragedy, it's a shame, it's it's nationwide, more or less in the more of the urban the urban society in the urban city, and, and we have to do whatever we can. And, and just like yourself, in providing a platform and an opportunity for people to see your your program uh, and to hear or to see the movie. That's more important to see the movie that'll make you think, make you cry, make you laugh, and really make you kind of sit back and, and and think about, wow, this is such a, a tragedy. D Donald, uh, uh, luckily in Boston, we have a lot of people in, in the communities that are like you and Dennis, you're out there trying to help people. But at the same time, I wonder, this, this is a documentary, you're showing the young people, what would make them want to be involved in this way? Um, well, it's funny, when we initially, when Coach and Rudy initially, um, came to Street Safe, the documentary was more so about, you know, following the street workers and, you know, getting publicity for the street worker program, Street Safe Boston, to be able to get more funds because the funds were running low. You know, it was like a five-year trial. And so when we when we all connected and once we, you know, once they started coming out with us, some of the young people we were surprised that they didn't mind talking. And so that kind of shifted from, you know, what we were doing initially, but also to, you know, let's let's bring life to these young people. You know, let's let's show the world that they're human. You know, and so as they started talking, you know, there's a lot of healing that comes from talking. You know, when you share your story, you share your pain, you actually start to heal. And I feel like a lot of these young brothers and sisters who are part of this ain't normal, they started healing. And I think that if others would have the opportunity, I think they'd also, you know, be more inclined to come because no one listens to their story. So I think that would compel them to come be a part of something like this. Uh, what's going on there? Because on the one hand, um, they're crafting the story, but they're also listening to other people and they're sort of feeling that the same thing is going on with all of them. What does that do? So they're, they're listening, but like a lot, a lot of a lot of my colleagues and myself, you know, we we grew up in the streets. And so, you know, we we know what it is that they need because we needed it at the, at the same time when we were young. And it's just by God's grace that we came out of it, right? And so as we started to, you know, be vulnerable with them, they got more vulnerable with us. And, you know, that's really the beginning is just being, you know, honest and open with one another, which made this film a success. So what uh, is going on with the young people that you saw in, in this film? Because it, it, it might not be just a, a bad decision at age 14. It could be someone who was traumatized at age four. Isn't, isn't that what you're up against? Yeah, it, it, as you noticed, uh, Nico, uh, who's a very talented young man and I feel has a lot to offer. He talks about losing his father at the age of five. And then when we were, of course, uh, doing a, a shoot um, and filming him and he was telling, he said, wow, his son is now five and he hopes that history doesn't repeat itself. So, you know, you can just see that, you know, there's so many negative forces pulling at these young people. Um, you know, and we're going through very tough times right now, you know, and, and you know, with unarmed black men being murdered and, and, and folks, you know, not given an opportunity to, to, to be the better version of themselves. And, you know, it's just an unfortunate situation that again, um, we, we hope that the film again, will will shed light on that and folks will kind of understand the importance of man reaching out to these folks and, and, and providing the necessary support and resources for them to be successful. Donald, uh, at one point in this film, you hear one of the young men, it's almost like the ticking of clockwork, you know, naming people who, who were deceased that he knew. Um, 
and and this happens again for you some of the people you were working with in this film they passed how does that yeah. feel i mean you know you know and i i'll i mentioned there was a couple that passed um josh um and then another young brother d'angelo and d'angelo actually died last year in the midst of the pandemic um you know it was hard to see him pass because during the time of doing street safe you know we all lost touch once street safe kind of dissolved you know some of the young people we all stayed in contact but d'angelo he actually groomed into a you know a loving father so he had his son playing football with the boston Bengals, and coincidentally i left the raiders and took one of my sons over to the Bengals, so we got to see each other a lot at the Bengals field and I would see him and I was just impressed by, you know, his growth, you know, in the film, he said, you know, he loved the life that he was living, but to see him now living a different, you know, lifestyle, was just so awesome to see. And so, you know, he got custody of his children, you know, he had an opportunity to get on a wait list. So he obtained an apartment that he was moving into and a week before he moved, you know, he was murdered. Um, and it's really just one of those things where, and, and this is, you know, to your question for me, it hurt because it's like we can do everything possible to help these young men and young women, you know, succeed. But I feel like it, it has to be more, you know, they have to sometimes leave the city to be able to live. So that one crushed me. You know, that one crushed me. I worked on his obituary because at the time I was working for the Louis D. Brown Peace Institute and just going through the obituary, knowing a little bit more about him. You know, it's very sad because we want to see all these young people win. We want to see them do even greater things than we're doing. So it, it hit me very hard. You know, and he comes from a beautiful family too. Dennis, uh, you, you and Donald, you, you try to get young people to change uh, on the inside in a way, but what about the outside? What, what do you hope to change in the outside through this film? It's about, Chris, like I said earlier, there's so many people, you know, that really don't know the beauty of, of and the value of growing up in the inner city and all that it has to offer. And there's so many successful young men and young ladies that have come from the hood, you know, I, the first black senator in the United States, Ed Brooke from Roxbury, you know, and we can go on and on in terms of, you know, because of, he got an opportunity because somebody guided him, Jimmy Walker, uh, who was the first, one of the early first pros to come out of Roxbury. He gets drafted by the Detroit Pistons, okay? Cause someone saw the, 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 the 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 quality and 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 opportunity for him and and things that he could be so they provided those resources and things for him to be successful and I believe there are so many young men uh, uh, black brown and white whatever persuasion that if given that support given that the resources given that that push and that guidance to help navigate their life that they can be successful, you know, and, and Donald and I, we work with so many young people. I've been coaching and, and I'm a retired history teacher as well as I'm still coaching. And, and I've seen uh, my brother and I, Harry Wilson, started the uh, Boston Raiders Youth Football and Cheerleading Program. And we've got anywhere from, you know, bank presidents to, to, to uh, uh, CIA and FBI agents, you know, to, to folks who just uh, uh, are working in the streets as street workers all from what getting that love and that that tough love and that nurturing and that guidance so that's what i hope that people who who have this stereotype and this negative perception of people that come out of the inner city that all we are are, are drug dealers and gang bangers and and basketball players and rappers no we're not we got doctors and lawyers and businessmen and teachers and and hopefully sports 
podcasters and hosts like yourself, Chris. <laughs> All right. Uh, I, I, I'm, 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 I'm flattered you were so inclusive, but I got to quickly ask you before we go here, uh, if people want to see this, uh, what's the best place to find it? Uh, uh, showcase maybe, or, or, or what's the best? Yeah, Showtime. We're very fortunate to be able to, we got a deal freestyle. Uh, um, our distributor got a deal with Showtime and we're so honored, Moody and I and Donald and everybody that contributed. So Showtime, you can get it on, uh, watch it on Showtime if you have uh, um, the, the, the uh, um, on demand and cable. And if you don't, then you can of course go to iTunes. iTunes, you can purchase it for $9.99 or rent it for $4.99. Also Google Play Movies as well as Vudu. So it's VOD, Video On Demand, and I hope that we put Boston on the map, you know, hopefully in a positive, but in a negative way, but a positive way. And we hope that Boston will embrace it and then oh, the whole country will embrace it and help save these young men's lives. Well, once again, thank you both very much for being with us. And also congratulations on that nomination. Thanks so much, Chris, for having us. I really appreciate you. That was Dennis Wilson and Donald Osgood Sr. for This Ain't Normal. We'll have more news in just a minute.